Hello, Petrus Gelati. I'm Jazz Gelati, and welcome back to another Protrusive Dental Podcast episode. I feel like it's been a long time since I had a PDP episode. We've had the couple of uh, group functions, which I hope you really enjoy with Pav. Uh, like I told Pav before I recorded those episodes, speak to me like I'm five years old, because uh, like I said in a recent Instagram post, I don't know very much about implants. So that's why I really enjoyed learning those basic principles from Pav and, and sharing them with you. And uh, we had some great comments uh, on YouTube asking for, for more of this kind of stuff because it's, it's a confusing gray area, which Pav made very clear. Anyway, this episode is about acupuncture and trigger points uh, and two really key uses of acupuncture in dentistry. Even if you don't proceed with actually uh, implementing acupuncture into your care, then I think you will still gain a lot of value from David Johnson. Dr. David Johnson did a fantastic job of explaining the benefits of acupuncture, but also how you can use something called acupressure to, uh, to actually suppress the gag reflex on children and adults. So do stick around for that absolute gem of advice that he gives. Uh, and I think you'll be able to gain even just from that. This area, you know, trigger points and acupuncture, it's yet another area which um, is not really talked about much in dental school, uh, especially trigger points. Like the more I learn about trigger points, the more I'm like, how, how did they not explain this in dental school? I can actually think back to patients at dental school which were having issues around trigger points and referred pain. And we and the dental tutor and I as a student, we couldn't figure out what was going on. But now I look back and I think, yes, it must have been referred pain. Uh, and it makes so much more sense to me. And you find it, once you know what you're looking for, you can find it a lot more. I think on a monthly basis, I find patients who would benefit from this. Uh, and I think the role of acupuncture is, is great. Two main functions of acupuncture that uh, da Dr. David Johnson explains. Uh, one is suppressing the gag reflex, and you'll hear all about that, including that little acupressure pearl. Uh, and the other main one is trigger point therapy. So when people have trigger points, and I'm not gonna ruin the podcast episode, I'm gonna let David Johnson explain what a trigger point is and why they're important, how they were discovered, how to palpate one, what relevance they have, and something that we should, I think we all should know as good general dentists and specialists, we should know this. So before we join that, I owe you a protrusive dental pearl. Now, I was going to make a whole episode uh, about this topic, but I thought, let me not, let me not, let's not drag it out, okay? Let me just give you this cool pearl, okay? Now, the pearl I want to give you is how I communicate an oral antral communication how I communicate an oro-antral communication. Uh, and notice how I'm, I'm sharing with you how I communicate, and I'm not saying this is the best way to communicate an OAC, because really, uh, when I stick this up on social media and whatnot, I wanna hear from you guys. How do you communicate OACs to your patients? Do you have a way that you like more than what I'm about to share with you? Now, when I think back to things that uh, I, I create that are original, which is like 1% of things, uh, and things which I have plagiarized over time, this is probably within the plagiarized category, 99% of things that I share with you guys, I've learned from people really clever uh, and mentors and whatnot. Now, I can't credit who I learned this from. I feel as though it's plagiarized. Sometimes, it, you know, I think it could have been me, but uh, it, it's too intelligent for, for it to be me. So uh, let me share with you uh, the pearl. So when I'm communicating an OAC risk, so any upper, maybe sometimes second premolar, depending on the radiograph uh, or molar for sure, and the roots are anywhere near the antrum, anywhere near, okay, I will always do the same thing. I will pull up the radiograph uh, and show the patient, hey, do you see this white line over here? That's your sinus. And I point to my cheek and I say, here, you know, we've we got two of those, these hollow spaces uh, in, our, in our skull. Uh, and the roots of your molar are very, very close. In fact, can you see this x-ray? They're overlapping. Now, this doesn't mean that the root is living in the sinus. It could just mean that it's close and it's overlapping. If your roots are living in the sinus, when I remove the tooth, I will take a look. And if I can see your sinus, if I can see into your sinus, I will do a few things to make sure you don't get something called a communication, an oral antral communication. Now, what that basically means for you is you'd have a new party trick. And the party trick would be is that you drink water through your mouth and it could come out your nose. Okay, and I just look at the patient and I make a, uh, like a kind of like a serious face, but also like a, a like, wow, that's kind of weird, right? Uh, and then usually you get like a laugh or something. And you know, I think most people tend to laugh at this and they say, they, they, they memorize it. And I think part of consent that's powerful because it's something that the patient will not forget. So even if 
the, an OAC does happen and it does uh, become something in the future and you see them again a few weeks later, then they'll remember, oh yeah, Jazz warned me about this, about this link, okay? Because my roots, my roots were close to sinus. And just to go back a bit, uh, when, I'm, when I'm showing the patients their radiograph and I'm showing their roots, I say, your tooth, your roots are making them take ownership of their problems and their teeth and their anatomical considerations. It's not my problem, it's their problem. I'm just there to do a nice, safe job for them. So anyway, so I will tell them you'll have a new party trick that's very memorable for them. They laugh, creates a positive uh, sort of interaction. Uh, and then say, and then I say, don't worry, to make sure that doesn't happen, once I remove the tooth, if I can see this, this sinus area, then I'll put a, a special stitch inside and then we'll see how you heal. Uh, and you know, sometimes people say that, oh, if you, give, if you give warnings like these to patients, then they might not have their tooth out or they might not go ahead with treatment X, Y, and Z because you scared them away from treatment. Well, Lincoln Harris always taught me that that's the whole point of consent, right? If your patient doesn't consent to a, um, a, a risk, then they shouldn't be having that treatment. So I don't worry about if the patient's going to suddenly back out the extraction. It's never happened to me. It's important for them to know because the time that you don't warn them, that's sod's law. That's when it's going to happen. Okay. So it's it's not the end of the world. And when I communicate in OAC, I'm, you know, when I'm talking about it, I'm not acting all like scared and worried. I'm like, you know, it could happen. It's your, it's your tooth. It's close to sinus. It could happen. Don't worry. I'll deal with it. So I'm instilling them with confidence as well at the same time. So how do you communicate an OAC? Please do let me know. Uh, type it on the Facebook, Instagram page, at Protrusive Dental, our Telegram group, or the Protrusive Dental Community Facebook group. Please let me know. I'd love to know how you do it. Uh, and let's see if anyone has a, a way that uh, I'd like to pinch and steal uh, and improve the way I communicate. Anyway, I will stop labouring and let's join Dr. David Johnson and all about the two important things you need to know about acupuncture and trigger points. Welcome Facebook, welcome YouTube, welcome Protruserati to a very special live. You know, I get to do about four or five lives a year, so not that, uh, not, not that many. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on The Real Dave the Dentist uh, from Wales. Uh, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? I'm very good. Very good. Thank you again for the invite. Um, as 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 I was trying not to do too much in the that little bit of chat that we do when we we're testing the uh, the feed earlier. I am you know um, a short time uh, uh, viewer. I've you know only just discovered you about a month ago with some of the stuff that you were talking about with some patients you were talking. But yeah, I'm a big fan. It's just you, that we are on the same page with some of the stuff that you were talking about. So um, yeah, your podcasts are blown my mind so far the fact that you have invited me along you know and i've given up a friday night of sitting with the kids and having a movie <laughs> to talk about something that's close to my heart is 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 great so thank you again we really appreciate it and the, the community appreciates it as well and i'm looking forward to learning from you a lot because trigger points is something that um i haven't been in this uh, in this area of learning in this arena for that long it really fascinates me uh, and my trigger point sort of journey is very much up here and down here and now moving to the sternchloromastoids but not so much trapezius and stuff so it'll be interesting to know where how you think that plays into that but also the role of acupuncture and how i got to 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 bring you on as a guest is uh, we must give a shout out to imran uh, I hope I'm saying his uh, name right. His Instagram handle, now his Instagram page is, and Imran, I think you're watching this because you said you tune in. Imran, your Instagram page is the worst page ever. And, and I mean the worst page ever because it's actually a fantastic page. It just makes me so damn hungry every time I go onto it. So it's uh, come and barbecue with me and it's just just flipping so good it makes me hungry every time and he suggested to speak to you uh, about trigger points and here we are and i'm so happy to, to have this opportunity uh, dave uh, tell us about how you got to know uh, imran uh, and then your origin story how did you yeah, enter yeah. this world of acupuncture and trigger points so Imran and, and his good wife, they came on one of my courses that I was asked to do by Health Education England up in the Leeds area. So they came on and Imran is, you know, and his wife, I, but he's one of those delegates who, who you can just see absorbing this knowledge. They're just like a sponge. It's just like you can see the osmosis drawing out of you. And and, and he just took it. And as, 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 as anyone who likes to teach um, sees that someone who just then flies with it, and that's what he's done because you know his his background he's um, an oral surgeon so this greatly relates to oral surgery but a lot of our, our courses what we're mainly you know I like to see you know what what our main delegates are so if it's a lot of oral surgeons as I've done I've, t I've taught down in Taunton huge amount of oral surgeons down there whereas sometimes a lot of what we're getting along is general dentists and that's where we want this we want this out in general dentistry this is as we talk about it's an extra tool in the toolbox yeah 
internet in the same way that you know you learn your your background basics of endodontics so you learn the root morphology you learn the anatomy you learn the disease that you're treating and you may have learned you know i've i you know, i've been graduated uh, 20 years now coming into my 21st so we're talking hand files in my day and once you've done a quota you could then move on to do in profile so it's it's you know that background you've got that but what we're adding is something in extra to treat the treat these conditions so patients with a prominent gag reflex patients with temporomandibular joint pain you have muscular origin um, in relation to that is headaches yeah migraines mm-hmm. especially headaches when we know Big that time. yeah 60 percent of patients who have temporomandibular joint pain are getting regular headaches we need to start coming away from here and moving as you're starting to do down onto the neck because we know that most headaches are coming from muscles of the head and neck so yeah so that's how Imran was on the course and, and that I you know I got interested into it I I was so I graduated 2001 from Cardiff um, I did a year's VT in North Devon and then came back to Cardiff as in those days we called it GPT and I think it's now called uh, DCT1 because there's DF okay. and then it's DCT1 but we used DCT1, to call it GPT yep. general yeah general professional training and you spent some time in the hospital time in the community so my time in the hospital was an SHO in oral medicine and oral surgery and one of the lectures it was just a very short lecture that we got to do was an anaesthetist came over from Morriston Hospital in Swansea and did some dental acupuncture for us and I responded really well I just thought this is really good I love the way it makes me feel made me feel very euphoric and chilled out I thought I've got to find more out about this so you think wait, wait I, as in the experience of learning or was it no no, as, oh, no, no not just that but yeah the way it made me feel it just made me feel really good i went and had it just chilled out lunch it was like i'd you know like i'd had a really good glass of wine but no it was just it was just <laughs> the acupuncture and these were points that i i don't use these points now i i there are some far better relaxation points and i'll come to them later um and they're great for using on patients um so i thought well i'm going to need to learn about this so you think well where are you going to learn about dental acupuncture so you know the internet was it's about and you can you can find it isn't as good as it is now with stuff like this so um so where do you go you go to sheffield that's where you went you went to sheffield and you learned from a best consultant yeah the best uh, dental cons- school as well yeah, exactly. I have friends who are there. And I learned from a consultant in medical acupuncture, a guy called Pale Rostad, who's a, a Danish doctor who was working at the hospital there and had his own clinic. And he used to, at that point, he was the person who was teaching dental acupuncture courses. He's now retired, so it's got to turn to someone. And I got asked by the British Dental Acupuncture Society many, many years ago if I would take over. So generally, if you see a course on dental acupuncture, 90% of the time it's yours truly. But if you come to our courses that we do in London, admittedly COVID made things, we've slowed down a bit on those. It's myself and my good friend tom thayer who's a a consultant in oral surgeon and you get the two of us and we do we do these um i think we've got one fingers crossed all being well omicron wise then we're looking i think it's march i'll give you the the exact date later on so yeah send me the link i'm gonna put it in the blog when this does get produced uh, and put on uh, i'd love to have these links because people need to learn and people need to know and then to like you said earlier before we actually went live someone from australia once flew to to attend one of your courses yeah Uh, yeah. now you know that just tells you about the volume of training that might be out there in the field of acupuncture that's going to be difficult now with um with um with the um with the covid situation. restrictions and stuff like that but yeah we used to have guy, guys and girls coming over from uh france spain portugal my uh, my good friend jose he again he's like imran came over really took this and and flew with it um riga in in latvia, latvia. we had a couple mm-hmm. yeah a couple from um over from canada no one from uh oh yeah one guy from south africa and uh, and the guy, and Peter all the way from uh, from Australia, which he regarded oh, it's only a flight, you know. And we I'd arranged it because I honestly thought that Wales were going to do a lot better than we did that year in the Rugby World Cup. We did better than England, um, but Australia were in the final, and uh, I thought, well, maybe he's come over for that. No, he, he honestly flew over just for the course. 
Um, so, you know, I've been teaching these courses for, oh, geez, near 15 years because, again, as because I was an SHO in oral medicine and surgery when I got to do this, um, I got paid for the hospital paid for it out of our, our study grant. And then I went into community four days a week and was asked to come back and do one day a week as an honorary clinical lecture in oral medicine. So I got to treat a lot of patients with head and neck pain. And one of the majority of things that I was seeing was patients with temporomandibular joint pain now you you're, you call it TMD I'll call it temporomandibular joint pain because um, you know there's different schools of thought um, I mainly go with what uh, Professor Renton uh, from uh, King says she says you know what we're seeing is it's not dysfunctioning she says it's muscular pain so we should call it that which yep. was um, she gave that once in a pain symposium I was teaching for the BDA and um, I was sat there thinking god my slides all say TMD and TMJD I best change my slides quickly but from what she was saying, I'm thinking, yeah, it's in the same way that you know, when they change the classification of, you know, you call a white patch a white patch instead of giving it a fancy name like leukoplakia and stuff like that. Call it what it is. So she says we should call it temporomandibular joint pain because the ones that dysfunction, that's when we should put that D word in. But that's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's there's just, a that's whole. Uh, uh, it's nice to know these terms, and the, you know, at the end of the day, we know it's an umbrella term. If you actually read the the RCD, the uh, research diagnostic criteria, there's many diagnoses within this umbrella term, and I encourage you all uh, mm. to look at that. And the one where which is so important in terms of the muscular origin, just like you mentioned earlier, and the reason why I think we need to learn now. So we've obviously we talked about all these people that have come to your courses from all over the world, but now let's uh, let's give these these nuggets and pass them on to the Patricia tuning in right now. Uh, the very fun fundamental bits of information, which is important because so much pain that we see uh, is non-odontogenic uh, non -odontogenic in origin, and it gets completely uh, misdiagnosed, completely missed. Uh, and uh, whilst I am a big fan of no diagnosis, no treatment, uh, I am making um, much less diagnoses of no diagnosis, if that, if that, if that makes sense. Because once I've done the usual checks for, is this odontogenic pain? Is this from the sinus? No. And then I move on to uh, the other areas in the muscles. And very often I'll, pre uh, I'll uh, palpate a trigger point and that recreates the familiar pain. And when I started to do that, uh, it was brilliant, you know, and whereas you think some of our colleagues out there might be doing unnecessary root canals, extractions uh, and various other procedures. So let's just start from the very uh, basics, if you don't mind, Dave. What is a trigger point? Yeah, so a trigger point is basically um, uh, a well-defined anatomical area within a muscle that upon stimulation, usually pressure, and that's the way that, that you'd be doing it in your examination, palpation and firm pressure, um, and definitely physiotherapists, the f firm pressure that they use, you know, my wife's a physiotherapist, my, even my kids say she's got thumbs of steel, but uh, upon physical, the physical terrorists, physical terrorists, that's the ones, and I'm so glad she's in the other room, and, um, <laughs> and the, upon the stimulation gives a specific pattern of, of pain radiation and that's what that's what you're recreating and you know that you, you start to when you start to look at these maps so we've got i've got um uh Pale rosted's great book which is uh, acupuncture for dentists and it's got these great maps in and the crosses it's you know it depends on how big your screen is but you know i'll find one of the bigger pictures but um what it's basically showing is when you stimulate that that trigger point, that's when that patient gets that specific radiation pattern of pain. I, did, I found one earlier. There we are. The, the one I've been uh, finding the most uh, now before this is me before now feeling uh, moving on to sternocleidomastoid and how important that is. Like it's one of the only muscles that can refer uh, pain to the contralateral side, uh, which which I learned about uh, some months ago, which was fascinating as well. And, and how the trigger point on the right SCM could actually give a headache on the left. Uh, yeah, uh, just front, front just side. yeah, just above it, just above, like a small circle mm. here. But what the main thing that 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 trigger point does, and there are there are four main trigger points in the sternocleidomastoid is C-shaped pain around the eye. And that was something, this was one of the things that as I was building up my portfolio um, of cases that I was seeing, I saw um, a patient on the oral medicine clinic when I was, um, you know, starting out as, as a, a clinical lecturer and she had C-shaped pain around the eye, which was, you know, had been diagnosed as um, atypical facial pain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I was asked and, and she'd been offered different therapies. She was, I don't want to give away too much, but she worked over in the main hospital on one of the clinics over there. 
okay and so she she had some background knowledge and she didn't she didn't want to take some of the medications that were being offered her amitriptyline that kind of stuff the yeah, usual stuff like kind of stuff did, they yeah, give you yeah, the mm-hmm. therapy she didn't want to be offered those so i got asked would i have a look at it and see if acupuncture would help so just went straight back to the beginning of you know tell me about your pain and she said what it was well from from reading books like travel and simon and peter baldry's book uh, peter baldry was one of the founding fathers of british medical acupuncture society c-shaped pain i just went straight to the sternocleidomastoid mm-hmm. put a few needles in just some light fit light needling you know found these trigger points light needles in pain went away took mm-hmm. the needles out pain started to come back but instantly i know that's a thing that's the mm-hmm. thing so you know it took it took a course of treatment seeing her weekly and that's what we like to do but again with pressures are on the nhs and pressures in practice it depends how you can fit it in i'll, I'll come to that way I, especially if you're an nhs practice where you can fit things in so it doesn't eat into your time mm-hmm. but yeah that was one of the first ones i saw you know and it, it presented that we we used to have a um a swag the south wales acupuncture group which was mainly for doctors and i I was the only dentist there so you know i went i went to them i said oh so i had this case in and talked about it instantly all of them knew what it was they would have done exactly the same but for me this was mm-hmm. you know, a new thing because otherwise yeah wouldn't have known because yeah we talked about it on medicines or different routes neurologist or, or whatever these the routes that the, these patients may end up but i think it's important for all dentists all every single dentist to have knowledge that these trigger points a exist how to mm. uh, palpate them to some degree and you may need to go to on a course to really do it properly uh, so that you can make um, better diagnoses because the most common one i, I found uh, before i now move further i'm excited to learn uh, from you tonight further is uh, temporalis giving pain in a lateral in, in uh, incisor region and also um, insertion of the master giving pain to a lower molar uh, I've got some great videos of patients and say oh yes yeah, raising my hand I'm feeling the pain and w- when you s- start noticing these things it's just brilliant it really completes your ability to be able to get a good diagnosis yeah, yeah, because sometimes we, we learn all these muscles and it's, you know, you spend that first year at university learning, you know, all of these muscles and even colouring in the muscles in different colours. If you've got the, the, the you know, the uh, anatomy colouring in book, that was my, one of my favourite ones to do. But but knowing about how they can give it, it was never taught. It was never, but then I, I'm not, and I'm not blaming dental school because to be honest, you know, there's so much out there. It is just getting you out there as a safe, you know, a safe beginner, a safe learner. So there's so much. That's the, that's the exciting thing about it, that there's so much more to learn. I'm t- 20 years out and then still learning everything. You know, it's um, it, it's fabulous. So, yeah, we, we need more of that out there to learn certain things of different pain because we're not just the teeth. We are the whole head and neck. And especially when that pain refers into our air and can affect our, our treatment. And, you know, it um, yeah, we don't want to cause over treatment, but we don't want under treatment because our patients can be in pain. Um, you know, Pale, who used to teach me, um, when he was teaching in Denmark, they, they do it slightly different, especially they, they'd set up for headache clinics and they'd get a dentist along, a doctor along and a chiropractor along and they teach them all. So they'd be like a mini MDT. But if, wow. you know, if, if you as a dentist have, you know, done the appropriate courses, done the training and worked through a portfolio, then a lot of this, you know, I personally, I don't think the a patient's just coming to us about headaches is really our remit. I think it's more in relation to temporary mandibular joint part. I don't like that grey area and I don't want to get, you know, um, the GDC or anyone like that too excited. But it, it, as we know, like I said, 60% of patients with TMJ pain are getting, are getting, um, are getting headaches. So yeah, that's this is what why a, that's we what should a... be. Yeah, this is why we should be screening for headaches. But you're right; it, there is a grey area where we can't diagnose. We can't actually diagnose a headache. And it's really important to, to say that we can't diagnose it. But uh, and it's the same way when I give a patient's appliances because I don't do uh, I don't offer acupuncture yet. Uh, and uh, when I give appliances to help them with their muscles and then their headaches go away, I never tell them that. Um, your headaches will definitely go away. I'm managing the forces of bruxism. I'm doing all these other things. But some of my patients have found that their headache's gone away. And that's usually when I've, been, when I've done my muscle palpations and it's, it's giving a positive response and I'm there and thereabouts in, in, in the ballpark. So that is um, important as part of your palpation to figure that information out before you do anything. But I guess the next step for me is, is look into acupuncture. Now, you mentioned about what a trigger point is. How do these trigger points actually form in these patients? What's the etiology uh, or the, the, you know, the, the uh, the pathophysiology of, of, a, of a trigger point. So, yes, yeah, so trigger points are always there in muscles, and we either say that they're sort of like on or off, or some people will call them on and latent, okay? 
Um, and the way they were really discovered was we're talking going back four or five thousand years in China. OK, with traditional Chinese medicine. And so if you, I take you back to my clinic 5000 years ago and say so you might come in to my clinic and I notice that you've got this main sort of like focus of pain. OK, well, I'll use modern terminology that's just here in the trapezius and it's radiating up your neck. And I see another, you know, 50 patients who've got the, the same and I, I keep good contemporaneous notes. So um, dental protection love me. And I start to notice this pattern of these main patients with this focus radiating up their neck. But then I've got another 50 patients who have got this main focus just where yours is radiating up to. And that's radiating into the temporalis area. But for another 50, it may be radiating down. So I start to, you know, and we're in China 5,000 years ago, and the Chinese weren't dissectors of the body. What they were was very good topographical observationalists. And they didn't know about Melzack and Wall's gate theory of pain. They didn't know about myelinated and unmyelinated fibers. But they were really good topographical observationalists. And when you look at sort of like head and neck mapping of acupuncture points, and there's an 85% correlation between acupuncture points and trigger points because trigger points are always in muscles, but acupuncture points aren't necessarily always in muscles. So that's why it's never going to be 100%. But when you look at the mapping of acupuncture points and you see these points and what the Chinese did was they came up with these meridian maps. And when you look at these meridian maps, what they basically did is join the dots. And that's when you look at meridian maps of acupuncture points, you're looking at them looking at musculoskeletal referral patterns of pain. And it's phenomenal when you when you look at it, you know, you see patients who, you know, have pain from their master and you'll see that it radiates up into the temporalis or radiates down the neck or along the jaw. It's just really good topographical observationalists and that they've mapped these out. So that's where, you know, we think, you know, theory of acupuncture comes from, from the mapping of trigger points. Um, but what so is the, the thing that actually, you may, maybe you're coming to this, but what is it that turns a latent or, or one that, a trigger point that's off? What brings it on? Is it the whole uh, bad posture, our stress, the things that we, the naughty things that we do, yeah. the, the, the poor posture that we adopt? Is that the kind of thinking? So it's basically injury overuse mm. improper use so that you know that could be from you know whiplash from a car accident it could be digging in the garden where and you always go oh I've, i found some muscles that i you know i didn't know i had they were always there but what you've done is you, you've injured them and with in our case with patients with temporomandibular joint pain that could be you know that overuse that clenching OK, now, one thing we know for, from studies that came out of Sweden, looking at the masseters and doing micro assays and micro arrays in these in these trigger point areas, what they were noticing was increased lactic acid products yeah, and decreased oxygenation. But you're going to get one with the other. So when we mm. you know, when we find these trigger points and we're sticking this needle in what the acupuncture needle is doing into that trigger point is you get histamine release. So whenever you stick an acupuncture needle in, you'll, you'll notice you get that sort of like red wheel. Yeah. And you've got histamine release. Well, we know that histamine release causes vasodilation. So you're mm -hmm. going to get increased blood flow to that area. So you're going to get increased oxygenation and increased perfusion. So you're basically going to wash away more of these lactic acid products. But one thing we do notice, and this is why I, I say, and I say on all of my courses, and it, it, you know, it's one of those things that you come on an acupuncture course and you're really keen to stick needles in. That's all you want to do. You want to <laughs> stick needles in. But the most important thing is the examination of the patient. Yes. And, and especially with the form of acupuncture that I like doing, which is, it's called, you know, trigger point acupuncture, musculoskeletal acupuncture. And that's the stuff I really love. And it's a real Western acupuncture. And, as and this is dry. To... This is dry needling, right? You're yeah, not actually injecting is... any fluid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and dry, yeah, dry needling. And dry needling is also um, not to cause bleeding. OK, mm. so that's dry needling as well. But yeah, basically dry needling. So you've really got to find that trigger point. That's why the good examination. And if you get the the needle right into the trigger point what you get is a twitch and then we i basically see it as like there's really tight fibers there that then just go mm, and then just mm -hmm. melt down you can take the needle out then it's like when mm -hmm. you get that id block spot on yeah you know you mm -hmm. barely need to put any um lignocaine in there so um yeah it's just and it just it just goes 
but mainly what acupuncture is doing, like I said, increased profusion to that area. You know, there's there's that whole Melzack and Wall's gate theory of pain, which is happening in the second and the fifth layers of the dorsal horn, and that's what we call a segmental effect. But locally, that's the local effect. And then with the acupuncture point, if you're really truly in the acupuncture point, that um, gating of pain are sent up through, and this is where we get into the heavy, heavy stuff, up through the lateral spinothalamic tract into the higher centers of the brain, into the pain centers of the brain. And that's where on things like fMRI, you see those areas lighting up on fMRI. Difficult thing with acupuncture and fMRI, metal needles, world's largest magnet. It's never, you're never going to get on with those. But you can use non-ferrous needles, you can use gold needles. And again, the other thing that makes it, 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 makes it limited is... There's nothing new in acupuncture. There's no big company behind acupuncture, you know, funding it. Um, and it gets expensive. The big, most expensive thing is your time, unless you're going to start using an fMRI machine and they get very expensive to rent. So never rented one myself. We've got one of the best ones in Europe here in Cardiff. Um, it's called Kubrick. It, it, the, the 3D scans it does, my friend Jeremy uh, works with a team on it down there. And it is, it's immense. It's immense. But in your in your day to day practice, when you when you use it, do you use it as per like people refer to you as because they know you now and uh, the fact that you provide acupuncture, you get referrals for people in facial pain and then they suspect there's a muscular component and then you get to see them and then you get to do your examination and and figure out that okay there is some sort of correlation there are these trigger points uh, and then you would carry out your therapy or are these patients that you uh, are, have your own list and then you're just going the extra mile to diagnose these conditions and offering your acupuncture, acupuncture. How, how do you work in, in terms of a, a facial so, pain clinic? Yeah, so so my clinic, uh, my background is I treat, um, I'm a general dentist who works in the community treating special needs kids and special needs adults. And I've been doing that for um, 18 years, 18 years. And the more you do, the more, you know, um, specialized you become within that but I'm not a specialist I still like you know I, I love the fact that you say it, and I say the same I'm a generalist but I work within that field and it's great um, so we're a referral only practice treating you know special needs kids and special needs adults so but yeah if a referral came in then yes but I generally I'm um, I don't promote that out because that's not what I'm there for I'm there to do treatment under sedation uh, general anesthetic and do more complex cases stuff like that people who, who can't accept treatment within general practice but if one of my guys that I see um, yeah it needs it then yeah I use it on them you know I used to use there's, there's some lovely points just on the top of the head around the crown which are really good um, for sedation feel just a nice relaxed sedative effect and I used to use them a lot and I still teach them a lot but I have better things now you know I have um, different gases and if if my gases and drugs aren't good enough then you know my colleague Simon <laughs> or Tom in the hospital who, who are anaesthetists then theirs are better yeah so um <laughs> but you know for those before before I built up my sedation portfolio um then I was using these a lot and um you know and they're fabulous nice simple technique you know five needles so you know you you're overhead like a box of acupuncture needles like this 100 needles 10 pounds so each needle wow. 10 pence so you know your overheads for acupuncture are, are extremely you know extremely low um your most expensive thing is is your time so i'd say to anyone mm -hmm. starting out doing acupuncture you know you want to be doing it say you know at the end of the session yeah or at the end of the day yeah especially if you're using it for someone with temporomandibular joint pain and you're not going to be doing anything else yeah you might be doing the splint and stuff like that um, myself i like to use um, acupuncture to get rid of the muscular pain i just see mm -hmm. it as these sort of like magic little you know arrows that get right to that pain that target it and i know that's how um manufacturers of like ibuprofen always like to, they like to show a bullseye <laughs> you and that's how i i visualize it in my head they do we are really targeting it you know my wife's a physiotherapist um i was into acupuncture before we got together and she's doing acupuncture courses but she still prefers you know getting the thumbs in she likes that even though she's not musculoskeletal anymore um but mm -hmm. me you know um with the knowledge that i've done because the amount that you can use acupuncture for within the dental field is is finite you know we're to, around here yeah i wouldn't mm. expect patients to start stripping off any loan there so i'm working on 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 the top of the shoulder you know for headaches in relation to temporomandibular joint pain 
Um, yeah. But I still read around it, and we get to do other courses. So once you've done a course like our one with the British Dental Acupuncture Society, there are some great ones with the Medical Acupuncture Society on headaches, back pain, all stuff like that. It's not for us to treat, mm-hmm. but it's great for yourself. And the trigger point ones are great. So, you know, throughout um, – I was getting some um, – plantar fasciitis some pain mm-hmm. and at one point I've during at, yeah mm-hmm. uh, at one point during the um i think we were on our second lockdown it could have been a local lockdown that we had here in cardiff uh, in wales so you could only go about five miles so at the weekend you know when you weren't at work the only thing you could do is be going out for walks with the kids well if you've got plantar fasciitis and that's really hurting making it painful to walk so some lovely so you re- research around it you look through the text there's some lovely trigger points just up on the car off, stick some needles in there did a treatment one day did a treatment the next day fine i was fine to go walking you and know. it's almost instant relief yeah near enough near enough i wow. you know with patients if i was doing more intense treatment i would do one day on one day off it's on myself I, you know i'll 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 i'll, I'll, I'll uh, really go at it with myself and also did some points right in um um, and I wouldn't recommend it. I was chatting with my friend Mike, who is the um, director of the British Medical Acupuncture Society, and he said, what, you put it right in the, the arch of the foot? He said, that must have been painful. I said, you, I have no words for it. I said, but <laughs> it worked. The distal points, they're the ones away from it. They work really well, but I did do some local needling. Oh, and I'm so glad I did, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to go out. But it was, um, yeah, my, um, when I put the needles in, it was like my hand wouldn't allow me to do it. It was, it was, it was, it, but it works. So, you know, um, whenever I go away, we always take acupuncture needles. I've used them, you know, when I've been here, there and everywhere on, on different things, when I've been on expedition training and stuff like that, and someone's bound to get a little bit of back pain and, you know, I'm not in the UK, you know, I saw, so I might do some manipulation with my fingers, a bit of physio and stuff like Mm. that, but understanding trigger pointing and in those areas and just, you know, works really well that's the basis of musculoskeletal physiotherapy so um Mm -hmm. you more dentists getting into it and working down you know coming away from this area yeah examining muscles of of uh mastication especially the master and temporalis you Mm -hmm. know lots of trigger points in the temporalis um it fits in with a line called the gallbladder line that goes back and forwards and there are lots there but moving down the neck, the main ones that we look at, especially in relation to headaches, are trapezius. That's the mm-hmm, big mm-hmm. one for us, especially, you know, in dentistry that we all lean forward and we all, you know, round in and we're at the coal face. And then we come away and at the end of the day, we most probably haven't drunk enough fluid and we've done this. We're going to get headaches in our profession. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. especially if people are, you know, not wearing loops. But that's that's another bugbear of mine. You've got to have loops. I would love to see a survey of dentists and see what percentage of dentists and, and dental nurses and the dental team suffer from headaches compared to the general population. That'd be a real fascinating uh, study to do uh, and obviously they they usually be um, muscular in nature and and on that point most temporomandibular joint pain to, to use the terminology you said about Tara Renton um, most of uh, the, the, let's call it just TMD the umbrella term is muscular in origin so i.e. 65% plus uh, then there's less intracapsular and a lot of it is mixed but even in those mixed cases uh, the muscular component uh, should not be ignored it's, it's often the bigger component mm. uh, and that's where I see uh, the, the role of uh, these trigger points and acupuncture and that's why I like to refer to really good physiotherapists like my friend uh, Krina Panchal who's doing great things she's taught me a lot about uh, trigger points actually what are the uh, other main uses of acupuncture uh, in dentistry so i know that, well, i've read uh, on these forums from from colleagues who do acupuncture uh, lots of dentists raving about the ability of acupuncture to help with the gag reflex can yeah, you tell yeah. us about that yeah yeah so the, the I, I i on the course i say if you go away from this and 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 we aim the course at generalists yeah we aim the course at generalists because there's no point teaching everyone some of the the really you know rare stuff that's going to come into general practice yeah the stuff that's more likely going to be in oral surgery and oral medicine so the the main things we teach temporomandibular joint pain um anxiolysis yeah the points on that but gagging and if there's one thing one thing alone that you're going to use for and this is what's great for the again the dcps so the hygienists and therapists who come on the courses as well because obviously a lot of practices are oh, this patient gags send it to the dcp you know 
Whereas me, I like to keep <laughs> stuff like this, yeah? And in our practice, you know, we're offering sedation. So that, that synergistic effect of sedation, you know, inhalation, sedation, and, and the acupuncture. So the point is basically, if you know, you know, your lateral calf tracing, it's point B, yeah? The most, that, that most inferior point as the lip comes in and the chin comes in, just in it's there. The mentalis muscle. Yeah, just yeah, just above it. So, so you look at the patient like as an orthodontist would from the side, uh-huh. and it's that most inferior. And even point, it, point B on a lateral calf. Yeah, right there, <laughs> that most inferior, yeah. the most inferior point in there, that most uh-huh. inferior point in there. And even on patients like us, you know, your beard is far superior than mine. And and, and it, but you do, you palpate that area, and then it's a very precise point down the midline. In it goes, 15 millimeter needle, and it goes in until it stops. But that doesn't mean, you know, it's basically it just gently touches the bone. Just a, okay. But it's not in, it's not in the sulcus. It's below the sulcus. Yeah. So you, you've never pierced someone through and through. And that point, mm-hmm. that point, that point's called conception vessel. It's on the conception vessel um, meridian that goes from your lower lip all the way down the midline. Okay. And and that goes in. It takes about five minutes to work. Okay, it takes and about five how minutes. How successful is this? Um, how, how, what as a percentage do you know, either in the literature or from your own experience? Um, how from my, my is experience, it? I'm quite persistent with it. And if it's not working, then it might be that my aim is slightly off. So I will keep the original needle in and then put another one alongside it. But yeah, you're looking about 85, 90%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just got to give it a bit more time, but I don't just use that one. And so what we teach is there's a point just above the tragus. There's just there's this small triangle just in there, and it was rediscovered by uh, Janice Fisk, who's one of the, the founders of basically um, special care dentistry, and it, it getting, uh, getting recognised as a speciality within dentistry. And uh, she's part of the Dental Acupuncture Society, and just there. And we call that, we name it after her, the Fisk point. And it has the advantage patients can't see it. It doesn't get in the way, even though it only gets, it only gets in the way when, um, if, I've, if, I've cut, if I've marked up the rubber dam wrong and, um, and there's too much <laughs> rubber down here. But this one can, with repeated opening and closing, work its way out. If it does, you just reapply it. So CV24, the Fisk point, well, we say bilateral Fisk points, yeah. Uh, and then there is another point, and it's uh, one of the points on the wrist that a lot of people, so it's the most distal wrist crease, and it's three fingers down, which in a, an acupuncture measurement is called chun. Okay, so three fingers mm-hmm. is two chun, and it's just at midline, and it's PC6, pericardium six, and there's a lot of research done on that one. Very good and anti-emetic point. And as dentists, point. we can poke needles uh, on the wrist? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, it was one of the first points that I was taught, I think, you know, because you're using it. I don't think it's in, in an area that's... Um, to uh, risque and or risky and you get by the mm. way so we're not asking patients to strip off the ch- it's a it's a good distal <laughs> point in an area that's easily accessible I do, you know unless people have got you know an aversion to showing their wrists in public then fine but the local mm. points are far far better pc6 pericardium 6 is what's used uh, with c bands those are acupressure bands for c sickness ah, travel sickness uh-huh. but again takes about half an hour and who's got half an hour so we generally yeah. go with the local points which are a lot quicker there are also there was a guy called bob who came out to one of our courses over from vancouver and there are some points on the ear and you can get these like little clips that just clip just behind the lobe just around here and he came on one of our courses because someone had told him about these these clips and he wanted to just understand how this worked. So he, he you know, he'd used them in his practice. He still didn't understand how he worked. He came on my course and I went, Yeah, auricular acupuncture's not really my thing. I, I know about <laughs> it. I do bits. I said, but I can tell him about these points, but you know, I said if it works, it works. Uh-huh. Yeah, I said I don't do auriculo stuff, um or ear acupuncture as it's called, but the local point yeah acupuncture is great for them and that's something that in our practice because we're being referred a lot of patients with excessive gag um you know you can take someone with a, a gsi of four gag severity index from a four down to i didn't a even one. know that existed 
Oh, the gags. Remember, in dentistry, there is a grading system for everything. (laughs) And if not, someone's working on one. But yeah, the GSI, the GSI, the gag severity index is what their gag is like before you've done anything. And then when you've done whatever you do with it, it could be hypnosis, it could be desensitization. Um, I'm not into salting of the tongue because we like to keep a low salt diet. I was going diet. to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, again, mm-hmm. that most probably works on a similar neural, neural pathway. Um, but you know, for me, I do acupuncture or it could be, yeah. just be doing inhalation station or the two combined. And then there's your uh, GPI, your gag prevention index. So what you've brought that gag down to. So it's just a before and after measure. You can give it, you know, it's, it's quite useful. It's um, easier, you know, especially if you're doing research on them. Um, so my mm-hmm. first, my first line, I will always, well, I'll generally jump in with acupressure, firm pressure. I was just, you took yeah. the words out of mouth. So I was going to ask, okay, what if you don't have a needle at the moment and you haven't been on your course yet? Um, I've read somewhere that you can use acupressure. So is that as simple as just getting the patient or you yourself, uh, Ramming your finger in that in that space, just uh, under the lip, just by the mentalis, just by the point B, as we said, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then giving it some time to work. Yeah, I generally, um, when I was doing um, my research uh, for my, you know, to complete my uh, foundation training in dental acupuncture, I did a research because at that point my my main patient basis was kids, so I was doing uh, a needle free technique to reduce the gag on pediatric patients prior to taking bite wings because Mm. I want bite wings on kids because it helps improve my treatment planning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even with your size zero film, it can, you know, stimulate that gag because the main areas for stimulating a gag, lateral border of the tongue, posterior palate, lo and behold, what does, what does the uh, bite wing like to do? It likes to stimulate those areas. And the way they swallow, the way they swallow is, is, it makes it even more difficult uh, by placing a bite wing. So that's uh, fascinating. So uh, any guidelines as to how many minutes and how hard to press in that area? For for my study, I did it for a minute. Why a minute? Because it seemed about right. How firm? Firm enough to cause blanching so a bit like do you know when you do like peripheral perfusion test yeah so mm. on the on the forward so firm enough to cause blanching but not firm enough to cause bruising okay mm-hmm. for a firm minute now i was doing a it was a single blinded study so i wasn't telling the kids why i was doing it but i knew why i was doing it okay now i tell the kids this is the ninja point yeah, it's the ninja point. So, <laughs> so I'm applying, I'm doing some ninja magic and we'll apply it to the ninja point and do it for a minute. Most kids, you only need to do it once, but if you've got to do it for a minute pr- prior to each bite wing, then fine. In, so on the study I did, so 90%. Yeah, success, again, because it was a short amount of thing. But I also make sure with it, you know, good technique. So making sure they're in good position, they're sat back, their chin is up. You know, and I also in, instruct them what I want them to do, close slowly and gently, not quick like a crocodile, slowly and gently. Um, so, yeah, so works very well. If that doesn't work, then fine. Then we need to move on to the needles. And that's with kids and with grown-ups, especially with grown-ups. Um, you know, in, in my time, I've only had uh, three cases that I've not been able to treat with a combination of acupuncture and sedation. And these these are men in their 50s, all three of them, men in their 50s, Previous heavy smokers, previous heavy drinkers. I don't know why. I'd, I'd like to know more. I'd like to, you know, I can tell you, there are the characteristics. So if anyone out there goes, yeah, that's why I've had the same. And this is the reason why it doesn't work. It's like, thank you. That explains it for me because I really want it. But they're, they're the three. Three previous heavy smokers, previous heavy drinkers, not being able to do a thing with their gag. Not being able to do a thing. So you've talked about um, the use of acupuncture and we talked very much about trigger points and how they're related to uh, myofascial or myalgia uh, of the umbrella term of TMD. We talked about uh, acupuncture and the gag reflex and you gave us some great pearls about uh, using acupressure. And in children, I think that's something that we can all do on Monday morning. So thank you for that uh, brilliant tip. Uh, any, before we just uh, wrap up now and welcome any questions from the audience, um, any other uses that you think general dentists are missing out on by not uh, implementing acupuncture as part of their practice? No, I, th- I think they're the main things. They're the main three things that we, we like, you know, uh, start, you know, start with the, you know, um, with the basic cases. And then after that, you know, start with temporomandibular joint pain. And once you're, once you're moving from that, that's when you start to come down onto the neck. And everyone, when they're, when they're, when they're first putting needles in, into the master and the temporalis, they're all a little bit wary. And we do it as a, a two-day course over a weekend. 
And on day two, we move down onto the neck. And I, I, I say to the delegates, once you're down on the neck and you've learned you've been doing the big muscles on, on trapezius, splenius capitus, um, then you, you just, everything pales into comparison because you've had to you've had to go onto the neck you've had to lift the trapezius and hold it up you've had to go in at a different angle very good safe technique because that's the most important thing good examination and safe needling technique i said and after that you know the um the needling of the masseter and if you want to do you know that there is a a trigger point that from the master that goes through to uh the pterygoid then mm-hmm. you can you can do that. Most people, you know, I don't feel that I need to needle through to the pterygoid. I think it's the big muscles that are causing those main problems. Mm-hmm. But if once I've turned them down, there's still some, then it may be that there's something a little bit deeper. But yeah, it's that whole thing of building up your portfolio. It's one of those things, come on the course, build up your portfolio. The more you do, um, but then just learning more, as I say, is, you know, learning more about musculoskeletal pain because it is a very interesting thing. You know, because oh, absolutely fascinating. And I'm, I'm actually going to definitely committing to. I'm definitely going to join you on your course. We just had a question, uh, right? So, uh, and and actually, the, one of the questions uh, from the same person. So, uh, Sherry, hi, Sherry, Sherry Abu Tarabi. Uh, so, after one minute of pressing, so back to the acupressure, yeah, uh, yeah. just for the gag reflex. Um, one minute of pressing, uh, and do you see the effect immediately? Well, the the, the gag's reduced, so and mm. I'm able to take the bite wing, so. That's yep, a success, so, we're, but we're talking, yeah. you know, small amount of stimulation. There are some patients who are referred in, um, and just to examine them, what I'll do is um, I won't be able to use both hands. It's that thing where, you know, it would have been nice if when we had that first COVID jab that we grew that third arm because it would have been so useful because I could apply <laughs> the acupressure and then I could have the mirror and the probe. Um, but yeah, so I'll often apply the. I generally like to apply the acupressure myself. Um, but you can, especially for, for patients who gag when they're brushing, talk about them applying it, you know, before they're Genius. brushing. But it, it fits in with that, that whole thing. There's, there's, there's lots of different tips, you know. The, one of them is applying firm pressure. The other thing is um, for some patients, I say, uh, if you shower in the morning, brush your teeth whilst you're in the shower. Because when you're bending over at that sink, you're already in that position getting ready to to be sick i said so mm. just changing the pressure and that because you can breathe better because you're you're stood up and you don't have to worry when you're spitting out the shower's going to wash it away but you know mm-hmm. good firm pressure for yourself and helping you know we've been doing it in our house when when we've been doing our lateral flows um every day and especially with the fact with with the omicron variant you know you've got to be swabbing the back of the mouth and um you know without so yeah so we make sure you know, one finger on and then back we go with that swab. But yeah, firm pressure. If it brings it down so it doesn't feel like when I'm, I'm swabbing myself that I'm going to uh, sick myself inside out, then, uh, then that's good. It's done its job. Mm. Next time I do a lateral flow, I'm going to give this a go as well. And, firm uh, you know, firm pressure. Of a firm pressure. Well, uh, I remember a patient I see about five years ago. And I felt really bad for him. He actually had an ex- the, the most severe gag I'd ever seen. He'd make himself gag every time he'd brushed uh, to the extent that we actually had to um, remove non... Yeah, they're non-functional, but still remove these second molars, which are, to anyone else's mouth, very accessible, c- only because they had early decay uh, and the prognosis was so bad because of his extreme gag to remove teeth under sedation which was real a real shame and to to, to be able to teach that uh, patient just like what you said uh, in the shower and to use that acupressure is something that could really make a big difference so yep. uh, I think that's a very implementable the, uh, the yep. other mm-hmm. well the other thing is also timing as well because especially when you've woken up in the morning you, your stomach's just not fully settled and you know when I you know we we now say brush at night time and one other time yeah the nighttime brushing being the most important you are less likely to gag at night yeah it's that you know your your stomach's more settled you just whereas first thing in the morning and i speak from personal experience and from 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 chat with patients that's when they're more likely to gag so sometimes it's just about well maybe wait till later on in the morning there's nothing wrong with taking a toothbrush to work and then just excuse me five minutes Go off and brush your teeth then. If you're less likely to gag, yeah, and you're able to get um, just work that into your day and just alter that time, well, you're getting that brushing in, but just later on in the day, and it means it's less of a um, mm-hmm. 
less a, less of a you know it's less of a task you know i I'm, I'm forever having to bring up sort of like altered brushing plans for carers who are brushing for for special needs patients and you know if you've ever had someone else brush your teeth it's a strange thing having someone else do it so mm-hmm. I, it's trying to teach them that you know it, it's you know it's no wonder that they might be pushing away it's trying to it, 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 you know involve them in it there's different techniques we can use but that's that's for another day that's off the off the subject but no yeah. but that's uh, really uh, something that we can implement in, in practice and sherry is also asked so this is the last question for which i wasn't asking you anyway is um and i know you're gonna send me brochures or links or whatever um, tell us about your course date uh, and if you give us a website maybe and then sherry uh, is really keen for that uh, and so am i so uh, please let us know my yeah, friend yeah i'll just i'll look it up on my calendar i live by my calendar so if i don't so yeah we're looking at fingers crossed um saturday the 19th and sunday the 20th of march so it's a two-day course um i think the price is around 450 pounds but that's for the total weekend obviously it doesn't include your accommodation but it includes for, the for um, a two-day course that is for phenomenal a, for value. a two-day um, practical course and the main reason for that is is the philosophy of those of us that are in the society the society is there for the education and it's not mm-hmm. about us making loads of money. So it's there. We have to charge it at London prices because, you know, we're at Regent's College and it co- it costs yeah. more. Whereas if we did it somewhere else, if we came to Reading, it might be half that price. Well, I'm going to have to host you in Reading because I can't make that date because I'm in Dubai. Hopefully it's all, all going well. Uh, for our if first not, we're, family we're holiday most, in almost three years. We are most probably doing because we haven't. We didn't do one last year. And we generally do them in October. But we haven't done them for the okay. last two Octobers. We all know why we haven't done them. Um, mm-hmm. The only thing that we'll be looking at is with anything flow before you go. So we'll be asking people to lateral flow um, before you know they come in for the course. That's fine because that's what we'll be doing. Because obviously people are coming in. This was our you know for the course, and they'll be coming from multiple practices. So everyone wants to know that after the weekend that they're fine to go back to work. So it's that mm-hmm. mutual respect thing. So yeah. So we'll be looking at doing one, um, doubling up this year and doing one a couple. Of months later, we're just sorting out the dates with Regents College. Please when do. We can uh, do I would, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm not just saying this because you come as, as a guest. I, I generally want to come to this course. I think it's the next uh, string to my bow uh, in terms of the, the management of, of temporal mandibular joint pain that I do. Uh, I, I do it quite well with, with, with splints and um, using physio techniques and referring to our physio colleagues. But I think I, I would love to have for just even just the gag reflex uh, and for s- simple um, trigger point areas to help people with their um, yeah, myofascial is. myalgia. I think it's, it's a great thing to be to be able it's to that add extra to tool tools. in the toolbox. That's what yes. it is. Yep. It's that extra mm-hmm. tool in the toolbox, and you can use it in combination, you know, with other therapies. So when you can you can a, a, a approach it in the in the, you know multifaceted way, and you know to get that. And different cases will need different things. And also, yeah, I get you get some patients who um you know needles are not their thing. So so mm-hmm. I so it's not like I go well I uh, I can only offer you acupuncture. I want to get them pain free. So fine we'll talk about acupressure we'll talk about firm massage in that area mm. you know using mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like your bio oil or just even just a simple you know um face cream and just giving themselves self physiotherapy in that area mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know when i was a student one of um one of the um oral uh, surgery consultants used to talk about this stuff called cold tar paste it was really thick and you get the patient to put a small dot of it over where we say the trigger point is and you get them to massage it in well this stuff was extremely thick and they'd have to massage it in until it dissipated well it took a decent amount of time so by the time they'd finished they'd given themselves physiotherapy over Mm -hmm. that trigger point you know so we're talking you know we're maybe explaining things a little bit more scientifically but um you know, things go back, you know, way before them. You know, I, I spent a bit of time with a San Bushman in, in Namibia on a, uh, an expedition survival course. And when we were looking at, at the women from, from the San Bushman, a lot of them, to treat sort of headaches and facial pain, what they would often do is they'd take a small blade and just cut over that area and then they would take ash from the fire and rub it in and the way you could tell is because they had some sort of like tattooing in that area and that's how they would do they would basically use a noxious stimulus basically to to help with the pain that they were having and that goes back you know for them most probably centuries if not more if not more so you know we're just explaining things a lot more scientifically now because we've got far far better machines better understanding of anatomy neuroanatomy and how things all links in but yeah for looking up the courses 
just Google British Dental Acupuncture Society, the BDAS. Yeah, British Dental Amazing. Acupuncture Society. Well, Sherry says thank you very much. She found it very interesting. And even though it's Persian New Year, she says she's going to come. Sherry, I'm sorry, sorry, I won't get to meet you because I'm able to make that date. But I'm going to be uh, pestering Dave for his uh, other dates, uh, especially at that fee. It's an amazing deal. And I can't wait to learn more from you. Actually, hands on. So really excited for that. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for giving up a Friday evening to, to be live with us, uh, with the producer RT, uh, and to teach us some things about trigger points uh, and how we can implement acupuncture in practice for temporomandibular joint pain and for the gag reflex. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. No, oh, and again, once again, thank you for the um, for the honour of being part of it. Like I said, when I saw your so it just yes, he's on the same page. He understands trigger points. Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it is. I'm it on is the same page. But I have so much more to to, to go to, to to be able to learn. I've got so much to learn from you. So appreciate you, it is, you, you it, sharing it is, with I me will and with say, everyone. So thank you. Yeah, it is a great journey to understand musculoskeletal pain. You know, my mm. wife and I talk talk about this a lot. I say, what happens when people don't understand it? And she says, they walk about in pain for a long time, or they mm. have to, you know, from the rest of it, they have to alter their posture and stuff like that. But, you know, there's speaking with um, medical colleagues, they just say, you know, really the good health model would be to have that every general medical practice has a physiotherapist who does acupuncture and something like that there, because 70% of what comes in of, of, of pain is, is musculoskeletal pain. And mm, musculoskeletal mm, mm. pain responds so well to acupuncture. That's what you and want. And it's the second most common uh, uh, cause of pain in the face. Uh, so after odontogenic pain, after you know, tooth pain, it is the next most likely thing. So uh, this is something that most dentists, when they qualify, they don't have no knowledge of. And I actually remember being in dental school and patients come in and the tutor will be there and I'll be there and we just don't know why this patient's getting pain from the molar. You've done your vitality testing. You've done your check TTP. Uh, you've done your probing depths and you just can't figure out why they're getting pain. And then I truly believe the next step, which the tutor didn't know about at that point, I definitely didn't know about at that point, was to then actually look beyond the teeth and look at the, the, the muscles and yeah. that would have given a huge clue or, or, or got, got us closer to diagnosis. And, and all it takes is just a couple of lectures just with some nice diagrams going. And, especially, and if one thing it will show you, especially looking at the muscles on the neck, improve your posture, <laughs> improve your mm -hmm. posture. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at these trigger points, everyone will go, you know, and we most probably all like this, just midline of the neck, which is a point called bladder ten and a half. It's on the bladder meridian. These, these names are hilarious. Oh, it, <laughs> none of them. None of them relate. When you cover the course, you'll see how none of them relate to the underlying uh, anatomy. And I'll, expl I'll explain why they're given the, the names that they are. They're medical names, and who came in and said we've got to have something so we're all working off the same terminology, so people don't <laughs> stick needles in the wrong place. But yeah, bladder ten and a half in between bladder eleven at the top, bladder ten down the bottom. That's where people like to be massaged that sort of like area that you think if i was a tiger cub that's where i'd like to be picked up on my neck it's just <laughs> oh yeah that's the area you go that's just a few little needles in there a few on the trapezius the worst thing is is the ones on the trapezius you can't do yourself so it's always good when someone comes along you bring someone else from your practice so you uh -huh. can do them and they can do you and when we do the course Tom does me and I do him and we both like this afterwards oh that's so much better it's reset <laughs> it's reset all that badness of the year Excellent. I just, I just want to say some more messages coming through. Uh, Aradna. Hi, Aradna. Hope you're well. Uh, she says, thank you. And Miles says, thank you so much, uh, both of you. Uh, ready for that course. Amazing. Miles, I hope you're well, buddy. Hope uh, Movember went well. Uh, nice to see your photos. Uh, um, David, this was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and thank you for telling us uh, about these uh, bladder points as well. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate your time once again. And uh, have a lovely weekend. And guys, thanks for joining this live. I'm just going to be ending the live stream now. So uh, thanks so much for joining. Well, there we have it, guys. Hope you enjoy that with Dr. David Johnson. David, thank you so much for just being a brilliant communicator in this. Really helped to make clear about the role of acupuncture and maybe you'll be able to use acupressure on Monday morning to sort of get you started with that tricky gag reflex patient. So I hope that gem was useful for you. I'm actually looking forward to joining David on one of his courses because it will complement the kind of work I do already with facial pain and TMD and I think to have uh, acupuncture to my list of treatments I can offer will probably be good for my niche that I'm developing. And I hope some of you guys feel the same way 
and will find somewhere local to you, no matter where you are in the world, someone who you can learn uh, dental acupuncture from. And I hope this episode helped you to, to sp spark the interest in that journey. Anyway, thanks so much for listening all the way to the end. Really appreciate it always. Do hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening, give me some stars, okay? Spotify rating and Apple rating here and there means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Bye.